Hello and welcome to CRS and Commentary. My host Cedric Kennedy. I'm going over my first time seeing Charlotte Flair. I don't watch WWE, so I ain't watched her until now. I hadn't even seen pictures of her online or anything. It's just not my thing. I I was peaked on this because of uh, Cornette and Last, and they did a little not a it was a cold watch along. It was the first time seeing this match. It was supposed to be like everyone saying it's a shoot. But nobody knows what a shoot is anymore. So this, you know, indie level of indie level mentality of what a shoot match is, and is they don't they don't know. You know, for a moment there was a shoot, and then it went away. You know, but there's more to this what what I see. But in any case, so seeing Charlotte, she comes out, her music is playing, and I was like, oh okay, fast music, but they gave it this up steady beat to it. Okay, cool, and. She comes out in this beautiful robe and stuff, very reminiscent of Joshi wrestlers, and it looks real. It's it's pretty, you know. I'm fifty fifty on it, you know. I don't like how it's you know, it's too fitting. I don't like that. It should be hanging, you know. I ain't saying being like her dad, no, but that the way she had to open it and walk that shows just a, a hindrance, you know. Not unless that's what she wants to be like a queen and look like queens always. Well, how they're portrayed anyway. Back in the day, I always got to hold the the dress up and walk so maybe that's what they're trying to do there but this ain't back then there's no need to do that you know make it so that she can get to the ring safe because she's walking her feet are close together it just takes a physical brain fart for her to trip that's all it takes that's why I'm yeah, 50 50 on it because I love the way it looked you know it reminded me that you know when I say Joshi I don't mean modern I'm talking about you know doing you know Manami Toyota and Akira Hokuto and Azmi Huga and stuff you know those people, those those females back in the day, in in Gaia and other stuff. So, um, you know she enters the ring. It's nice. The ref, you know, she makes sure the ref holds the the ropes open for her and stuff. And you know she gets, she shows, she shows everything. So she got the pageantry down. WWE does one thing, and that's pageantry. They make sure that the wrestlers have an epic intro, even if the intro doesn't reflect one wrestling style, two match type, and three just anything in reality so that's the issue that i have with that you know you're a wrestler you're not going to come to the ring and bite somebody's throat out you know so you can skip the death look and all that stuff you're not going to come to the ring and cut somebody's arm off or anything so having a fe a faux knife or a sword or something that's right out the, the picture you know so if it's you know costume to costume but you can't portray the role so you know just get to the ring and wrestle you know look like gold dust made sense you know that made sense things like that you know the genius you know so just uh, some things tone it down so Charlotte's in the ring ring the bell and I'm listening to Cornette and last because those, those are the ones that piqued me on this and I'm just like I watched this listening to them and I could understand and see all the hoopla and crap that happened and I'm like okay but then I watched it later you know without them in my ear watched it with uh, my sometimes co-host Cedra and you know I, I'm like it, I got more lost in the match I'm just watching the match just watching it you know not picking out little things here and there until that headlock and it, then Charlotte start talking they let you know Charlotte's leading the match Oftentimes, whoever grabs that headlock first, they're the ones leading the match. They're in control of the match. They're the ones like, hey, keep to the format, because that's what WWE is now. It's a format. It's a script. So if anyone says wrestling is scripted, they need to correct them. No, WWE and maybe AEW is scripted, but, you know, anything else? No. So, in general, I didn't like that part because it let you know that Charlotte... The one grabbing the headlock, they're the ones having an issue with the one in the headlock. And it was lasting a while. And I noticed that Naya kept kind of shaking her head subtly. And Courtney didn't say anything about it, but I thought she's not going to cooperate at all. So that part is the only part that started for me seeing the old oh crap this is not going to work out and they got into a, a, a scuffle and 
uh, Charlotte, at one point, you know, she just couldn't take no more because she threw an elbow and Nia just kind of stood there ish, sold it maybe 5%. Charlotte slaps her right across the head, just bings her one. And Nia's like, you, you, know, you could tell she got pissed and grabbed it, and Charlotte screamed. You know, <laughs> and she screamed. They, they had a tussle. They started slapping each other back and forth, yada, yada, doing what they got to do to get getting some frustration out. Just getting some frustration out. It comes, it goes, and then that's it. But I watched this, and I, I, I was just blown away. Seeing Charlotte looked just like her father. If Ric Flair was a female, that's what she would look. That's what he would look like as a female. I mean, seriously, if someone told Flair to go fuck himself, he's like, "Oh, I did that, buddy." And how's my? There's my daughter. And it's like, "Oh crap, he did it." <laughs> you know, she moves like her dad, walks like her dad, even has the same facial expressions of her dad when things are turning out miserably i have seen that look a few times on flair's face with people he had to work with and it just wasn't coming off right or he got kicked or slammed in a bad way and he got that look on his face like i don't believe this crap i i love seeing genetics at work it's beautiful i love it it's just i i i who I'm going to come out and say it right now. And some of you might disagree with me on this. And that's cool. Because, you know, we're different people. But Charlotte is too good for this generation of fans. Too good for this generation of female wrestlers. There's some, there are, in you when you think about the entire female list of, list of female wrestlers out there, there might be at best... 10. 10 females that if they were all in the same company, the female division in that company would be amazingly awesome. And these are the females that will never get the chance to properly train another female so that they can spread proper professional wrestling. This is when, you know, some people want to think, well, you know, you just listen to Jill Cornette and you just a uh, you know, you're a fanboy for Cornette. No, this is when I want to just rip the rest of the hair off of his skull because he viewed female wrestlers as an attraction. And they are not. They are female. They are wrestlers. Like they are male and they are wrestlers. You are a wrestler. Your sex, your gender should not matter. You are a wrestler. And he don't like seeing the females for some reason. I don't. It's just his mental training and all this other stuff. He's not thinking, hey, they are wrestlers. They can put on a great match. And if they do put on a great match, they got to put it on in the way that he thinks it should be put on. No. But yet, he, you know, he surprised me at points by contradicting himself. It's like you work like a guy, which is an amazing compliment. And I get it. So I'm all for that. If someone can tell a female, hey, you work like a dude, accept it and be like, man, great. Keep this and never back down from that standard. It's that simple. Um, seeing Charlotte, there was a point where she was outside the ring. And it would be more on, I think, the commentary side, not the intro side. In my mind, I was thinking the right side, the right side going on camera angles, what they show you. But um, she is out there and she gets the same stance her father get when he is fed the fuck up. It's almost a hulking stance where for this, Charlotte looked like she should weigh about 90 pounds, you know. But I know she should. She's probably up there at about that going on a height stuff. Legitimately, not her wrestling bill. I can see her at about 125. You know, she could with muscle, the muscle she got, she could be 130. She could easily be 130. Um, but she got this hulking-ish stance. And when she takes that stance, you look it looked like she added 30 pounds of mass to her. She gets much larger, and she got that look on her face like. 
I got to go in here and work with this motherfucker, and it's definitely going to have to be physical, and I don't want to do it. Got to gear up and do what's right to get through the damn match. That's that look. I don't want to do this, but I got to get through the match. Because I'm going to tell you, one initial thought they have, I'm going to walk away and leave me in the ring. I don't care. But she's got to get through it. And so they're doing everything. And this isn't the commentary on that match. This is mainly me talking about Charlotte and stuff. Her ring attire. I think that I think the trunks are a little too short. I think they're a little too short. They should come down just a little bit further. Make sure you cover everything and everything is fitting. Um, I think the top is a little too small. That's just my opinion. I, I, I would like to see females covered up you know you're athletes you know you're not trying to entice people you know but uh, it is wwe and hey let's be honest sex sells right you know so yeah in any case me i just rather see the athlete you know i don't want to look at something and be like oh yeah no I, I want to see the match in any case she's got to deal with this girl naya and naya is sandbagging everything. Nia Jack should not have a job with the most with the injuries that she has caused others. And you can look at her and tell she's not a mover. She is one of the most laziest damn wrestlers I have seen in a very long time. She I saw Nia a picture of Nia Jax. Uh it was a, a gif or gif, whichever you want to say. An animated picture and it was like okay that's one thing I see her now like a year and a half later or so and she's bigger than that I'm like this girl ain't even trying she ain't even moving in the ring she stands still she doesn't want to do anything Charlotte went for a plancha and planches when they come over the top rope they leap over the top rope Suicida is through is over the middle under the top and sometimes over the bottom under the middle just depends but she uses the plancha and the way her body is set Naya is supposed to catch her and do something Naya you can see her catch her and then oh no I can't stand up and she fell Charlotte's legs had to go from horizontal to oh crap and she could have almost, she could have injured herself. You know, honestly, no, it would have been Naya injuring somebody else because of her crap. So, you know, Charlotte goes through the match and I'm watching her. I'm watching movement. I'm watching grace. I'm watching facial expressions. And she sits up in that ring and that look on her face, just like a father, like, what is this bullshit? What in the world? How, what, what, how, what? Oh, crap. Just utter, absolute disbelief in the fact that this situation is happening. And you hear the commentators, I don't know which one it was, because they all sound alike. Even though they look different-ish, they all sound the same. One of them, I can only assume Michael Cole, or Cole 2, or Cole 3, was saying that they're no strangers to each other. And I'm like, if that's the case, why are they not working better together? So when you pull that out of your hat, and you let that escape your grill piece, then the crowd uh, that's at home listening is like, oh, these two should know each other. They should know how to work together. But clearly they don't. Now, this leads up to my uh, conspiracy hypothesis. With Flair gone, after the, how they treated Flair, it just made sense that maybe Charlotte might want to leave too. Might. You know, because Flair has never been about the money so much for Flair. Never heard him talk about, oh, I'm getting paid. I'm getting lots of money. It's been about, you know, the match, protecting the business, having the best match you can. Rick Flair, if you watch his matches against job guys back in the NWA days and early WCW days, even those matches were higher standard than the matches you get today. Ugh. 
And I ain't gonna lie, I I inside I marked out when Charlotte got a hold. She did that chop block, stomp on the leg, and then when she grabbed that leg for the figure four, she spun around. Inside, I got goosebumps the way she spun. I was like, that is way Ric Flair right there. You know, I I. I was just like, yeah, and then she got kicked off. And I was like, yeah, well, you know, she was at the corner. So, because there are just certain telltale signs where you know that the person is not going to get the move that they're trying. But when she spun for the figure four, I was like, yay, all inside. I was just, woo. So, I think that, and then, you know, Charlotte loses to a crap and that spine buster and Charlotte's foot hit the, the mat. I was like, wait a minute. You know, spine buster, your feet got to be up. You got to hit flat, you know, your arms either at your side or outstretched. And, you know, then they go for the cover on spine buster. Um, on any spine buster, even if you even if it's a a, a waist, uh, a wheelbarrow type spine buster, you know, the on Anderson or any traditional, not the thrusting style. Um, and it's just not Naya sucks. She just sucks. You know, um, see, like WWE will retrain gimmicks, but they will not retrain performance. Um, so I, I, I was like, I don't see Charlotte winning. I don't. It's considering the fact that Charlotte was trying to get a move onto herself, you know, jumping on the sh uh, Nia's shoulder. And Charlotte was trying to almost uh, infant worm her way up Nia's shoulder into a fireman's carry position, but Nia didn't. Oh, God, that was so sloppy and ugly. Yeah. So she gets this weird power bomb spine buster thing, and Nia wins. But Charlotte is laying there, and in the background, if you watched it. When Charlotte, you know, okay, now it's time to recover. She, you know, Nia's left the ring. It's time to recover. Charlotte was arguing with the ref. Not, not, not arguing at, but I mean arguing with because that match was crap. Ric Flair got telltale signs of when he's arguing with somebody after a match. And, yeah, Charlotte has it. Charlotte looks so much like her dad. Her back looked like her dad's back. As many times I've seen Ric Flair bent over, getting beaten in the back or kicked in the leg or an arm stretched or a, a, a over the shoulder headlock or something like that. I'm like, that's her. She's got her dad's body. Good grief. I this 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 generation just isn't. It's just not good enough for Charlotte. She's not, there is no wrestling promotion that's going to display her properly. You know, if there was some thing on TV, some wrestling promotion on TV, rustic looking, don't get paid much, but you know, you get paid enough to live comfortably, you know, a, a decent middle class life, more or less, you know, and you got more, you got like uh, a majority profits on you know uh, sales of, of merchandise and whatnot and she's up there and she's just wrestling just having a proper match yeah that would suit her tons better than this um you know looking good it means nothing you know pageantry ring attire it means nothing if your match is a crap it really means nothing. And I think she's going to be on her way out the door. I think that's what what's going to happen with Charlotte. She's going to eventually leave and this is their way of screwing her over until she loses the belt to someone and then she either is going to be out of her contract or she's going to break contract and leave. That's what I'm thinking. Because if every match is going to be like this, then yeah, because she <laughs> she's trying to work, and her opponent is just trying to work her over. 
And that's just not cool. But it's Charlotte is amazing. She's perfectly trained. She's got the air about her. She's got her persona down. Her ring work is amazing. Even to the point where she's working against nothing but adversity. So, you know, I'm curious to anyone's thoughts on Charlotte, you know, because most of most of y'all uh, will probably have seen her for a very long time. You know, you've seen her way longer than I've. This is my first time seeing her and it's not the best viewing, but I've seen enough wrestling where I can see what someone truly is. I can see it and it's not going to be good for her. And I would have, I would have fired Naya ages ago. Uh, if I have a bad perception on Charlotte or something, y'all let me know, you know, you know me, I'm all ears, you know? Um, yeah, I, I want to talk further, but I think this is pretty much it because I don't, you know, I don't really have much else to say, and I really would like to have more to say, but eh, if there's any, if, if y'all are curious about my thoughts on someone, a cold viewing, and, and what are my thoughts on them, then, you know, point me in the right direction, and I'll view it, even if it's WWE, what are my thoughts on them, and whatnot, I'll do that, um, you know, y'all make the request, I'll fulfill the request, and that should be all, so, hey, you know like share comment and if you're new to this subscribe and if you're new and you're not subscribed you want to leave a comment go ahead you know you want to roast me a little bit it's all good it's it's fun um so this has been Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary my thoughts on the first time seeing Charlotte Flair thank you for listening <laughs>